Good morning, Kingsley community. First day of school. All right, the parents are so excited. Bye-bye, kids. <laughs> we'll do a prayer for the kids and for safety for the staff and the children as they go back to school today. And in the meantime, we're gonna do daily our daily bread. We're starting with September. Remember, you can get these for free at ourdailybread.org. Isn't that nice? And I think you can get them um, ourdailybread.org, hard copy. And then inside they have these things and then you can just mail that in and get another one, snail mail. Or you can go to ourdailybread.org and I think you can get it sent to you via email. So today's devotion is by Wynn Collier and it is focusing on God's epic story. John 16, 25 through 33. This has got to be Jesus speaking. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. So John writes, Life's Magazine's July 12th, 1968, I was, I won't tell you how old I was, but I was newly born, covered, displayed a horrifying photograph of starving children from Biafra in Niagara during the Civil War. A young boy distressed took a copy of the magazine to a pastor and asked, does God know about this? The pastor replied, I know you don't understand, but yes, God knows about that weird thing for a pastor to say. The boy walked out declaring he was uninterested in such a God. <laughs> Good job, pastor. <laughs> These questions disturb not only children, but all of us. Alongside an affirmation of God's mysterious knowledge, I wish that boy had heard about the epic story God is continuing to write, even in places like the former nation of Biafra. Jesus unfolded the story for his followers, those who assumed he'd shield them from hardship. Christ told them instead that in this world, you will have trouble. What Jesus did offer, however, was his promise that these evils weren't the end. In fact, Jesus had already overcome the world, John 16, 33. And in God's final chapter, every injustice will be undone. Every suffering will be healed. Genesis to Revelation recounts the story of God destroying every unthinkable evil, making every wrong right. The story presents the loving one, Jesus, whose interest is in us, is unquestioned. Jesus said to his disciples, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Not the peace the world gives, he said, but the peace that I give, knowing that you don't have to worry, you don't have to be afraid, that you can rely in faith and have trust and depend on the promises of God. May we rest in Jesus' peace and presence today. So when Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, what is with this hair? In this world, you will have trouble. He didn't say, in this world, you might have a little trouble. He said, you will have trouble. But take heart, because I've overcome the world. Now, Jesus has not died at this point yet. He has not died and been resurrected from the dead. This is John 16. So he's talking to his disciples before he leaves and goes and um, takes on the sin of the world and uh, defeats evil. So Jesus walking the earth saying, here comes the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is near. This is what God looks like. This is what, this is how you can know who your loving God is by looking at me. Look to me and you'll see love, compassion, mercy, justice. Because remember, somebody had to pay for sin and the price of sin is costly and it cost his, God's son his death. But we know that he raised Jesus from the dead through the power of the Holy Spirit and now we can live eternally with God because we are eternal beings. We always lived eternally somewhere. Um, I'd rather live with God than without God eternally. So we talked about this on Sunday. We talked about, um, I don't know if you were there or not, or if you saw it online, you can go to this Facebook page and scroll up a couple and you'll see the sermon. It's called Struggles Rest. And it's talking about entering God's rest. And I kind of compared it to a rest stop. You know, there's rest stops everywhere. They've been around since 1920. But the thing is, is that if we want to enter God's rest, we have to do it just like we do a highway. We have to get off the busyness of life and we have to enter God's rest. And I talked about the first way we do that is through belief in his son Christ, because that's the only way we can enter anything in God is through the mediator, the high priest, Jesus. And this is the book of Hebrews we are focusing on. And then I said that, um, the second way we enter God's rest is we have to diligently do it, the Hebrew writer says. So we have to every day, not only believe in the gospel, hear it again, be amazed by such a gift 
that we'll have trouble, but God has already overcome the world, um, that God has already taken care of it. We have to believe that by faith in all the promises that God has given us. He'll be with us. He's never going to leave us. He will um, help us through whatever situation we're in. We may not be able to go around the situation. We have to go through the situation or the trial or the suffering. And in the end, we'll have our answers. Sometimes the answers don't come on this side of eternity. But on the other side of eternity, it's going to be like the veil's lifted and the answers will be there. So take heart, for I've overcome the world. I've told you these things so that in me, in Jesus, faith and belief in Jesus and faith and trusting and depending on God and his promises, you may have peace. We won't have peace if we trust and believe and depend on ourselves. We won't have um, peace, meaning we can have joy in the midst of suffering. We can have hope in the midst of trials because we know that Jesus is already taking care of the evil that is still existing in this world. God tarries because he wants people to hear about his son Christ. So our job in the meantime is to live through the troubles and the trials and the situation and to lean on God and to have faith and depend on God and his promises. That's how we enter his rest in his peace and his joy because when we enter God's rest there we find peace and joy. So how does the story you see feel how does the story you see feel tragic? Oh, the story about the little boy um, in Nigeria who was starving. It feels horrible. Um, how does Jesus' promise to write a good ending free you? That one day all poverty, all pain, all disease, all illness will be gone. When Jesus returns, and you can find that information in the book of Revelation, um, I would say studying the symbols first because it's very symbolic apocalyptic type of writing. Um, those symbols meant something to the people that John was writing that to, but to us, we're like, I don't know what that means. So you really got to kind of get into that. Um, but we can trust that God has good plans for us. It may take 70 years like it did the people of God getting out of Babylon when Jeremiah spoke that. I have good plans for you, God says through the prophet Jeremiah. But it was going to be 70 years later till they saw the um, release, till they got to exit from Babylon. In the meantime, our job is to um, take heart when we have trouble, enter God's rest diligently through um, belief in his son and faith in the promises, trusting and depending on those promises. So um, let's say a prayer for the kiddos and the staff today at the schools. Um, we've got a lot of schools in Grand Traverse County. We'll specifically pray for our Kingsley schools and um, teachers have a great year. Kids have a great year. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that you remind us that we can enter your rest, that at times we're going to have troubles. We're going to have a teacher we don't really agree with. We're going to have classmates that, um, you know, do the things that classmates do sometimes. It's not nice. And so I just pray for protection for our kiddos today. Keep them safe from anyone that would try to get into that school and try to harm anybody. I pray for um, them to have a wonderful school year, learn how to be good citizens for their community, how to respect one another, how to care for one another, and how to have empathy for one another. Um, and Lord, I pray for the staff. Uh, may they um, put first those kiddos and may they... Um, you know, feel the presence of you, Lord. May they put their wor bur worries and burdens on you. We pray this all in the name of Christ for all the schools in our area and especially the Kingsley School. Amen. All right. See you tomorrow. Have a good day.